Sometimes there are events or characters in history that will act like a white rabbit and lead you like Alice down a huge rabbit hole. Clave Jones has been such a character for this researcher of history. For the next several weeks, I will be running the feud side by side with the story of Clave Jones to get a better perspective from all sides of the story. Like most feuds, there are different versions of events. They often extend through several counties and in some cases even cross state lines. We will try to cover all of the known stories of the Holbrook Underwood feud as we can find. Tomorrow will be the story that is told from Clabe Jones' perspective and how he got caught up into the fray. But for now, we will get into the history of how the feud began, leading up to the siege of Fort Underwood and when it spills over into the Rowan County War. One of the things in this story that confused me was what in the world was a Jeff Davis drink. After looking in multiple places, it finally hit me that this was code for a person being on the Confederate side of the Civil War. Jeff Davis was short for President of the Confederate States, Jefferson Davis. It was not an actual drink served at that time. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Time Machine! Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get it going, we need your help. We still need to fire up the time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. The Roots of War it has been proposed that the actual feud itself may have had its roots in the lawsuit. In 1845, John Stamper and George Penland were in a court suit against one another. I've looked through several places and could not find the reason for this lawsuit. However, there would be bad blood between the Stamper family and the Penland family that would spill over to the Underwood family. Even though the Stampers would not be named as part of the feud's proper naming, it is generally agreed that they played a major role in all of the events. To the point that they actually had more to do with the more violent parts of the conflict than the Holbrooks did themselves. It is also generally agreed upon that George Underwood moved his wife and four sons, Alfred, Jess, Elvin, and George Lewis, to Tygarts Creek about 1847. It is thought that Underwood was a Republican leaning in his politics, and this was a major source of friction in the mostly Democratic leaning area. Another reason given for the hatred is that during the Civil War, the Underwoods were accused of stealing the horses from the Confederate leaning neighbors. Though the Civil War would take place April 12, 1861 through May 26, 1865, many places still had hard feelings about it. It was not that unusual for many of the feuds of the area to stem from a battle or skirmish in the war, or from feelings of resentment because one family took one side in the conflict and the other family took the other side. Sometime before 1872, George Underwood had been shot while at Olive Hill by one of the Tyree brothers. This may have been over a legal dispute over land rights as Underwood and Tyree had lawsuits against one another during that time. However, this did not result in a feud and the two reconciled their differences. According to the Big Sandy Herald in 1872, the two men were stumping politically together. Death of George Trumbo one of the main starting points of the feud is the death of George Trumbo. There are several different accounts of how Jess Underwood and George Trumbo came to loggerheads. This would end in the death of Trumbo and the eventual arrest and escape of Underwood. This part of the story is now told through the newspaper and magazine articles about the subject at the time. Account 1 According to the Chicago Tribune, dated October 10, 1865, there was a gang of 22 outlaws, counterfeits, and robbers under the leadership of Alfred and Jesse Underwood. The following is a word-for-word -word account of the story. Quote, There is a gang of 22 outlaws, counterfeiters, robbers, under the leadership of the Underwood brothers. 
two Carter County Desperados whose haunts are among the highlands of Bath, Fleming, and Carter, and whose headquarters are in Wyoming. They have Confederates, undoubtedly, among the citizens who give them warning when any force starts out after them, thereby rendering all attempts to capture them utterly futile. On Thursday, the New York Circus was to exhibit at Wyoming, and Dan Harper, Sheriff of Bath, and Dud Mezick, his deputy, suspecting that some of the gang would be on hand at the show, started for the mouth of Slate with the intention of arresting them. Their suspicions proved to be correct, and they succeeded in bagging Leander Adams, John Kiefer, and John Pierce. A few minutes after the arrest of these parties, George Trumbo, a late lieutenant in the 10th Kentucky Cavalry, was shot through the heart by Jess Underwood, who mounted his horse and fled across licking. Immediately after perpetrating the foul deed, he was hotly pursued by some dozen citizens. George Trumbo, who was thus suddenly deprived of life, was a gallant soldier and an estimable gentleman who leaves a host of friends to mourn the deep damnation of his taking off. The parties arrested were brought to Owingsville and lodged in prison. On Friday morning, Adams, who is the most precious scoundrel and formerly a member of the 24th Kentucky Infantry, was brought to this city by Deputy Sheriff Mezick and Officer Benson of Louisville, who we should have stated took a prominent part in the rest, and the latter left with the prisoner for Louisville on Saturday morning, where he was to be arraigned before a military commission on the charge of utterly counterfeit United States Treasury notes. Unquote. Second account. A story of how the feud officially started is recorded in the Mount Sterling Gazette, as found in the Kentucky Explorer, January 1999, edition, pages 29 and 30. Quote, A quarrel began just after the war in September 1865. Jess Underwood, a son of old George Underwood, got into a barroom quarrel with a man who called for a Jeff Davis drink. And in the fight that ensued, George Trumbo was shot and killed by Jesse. Many efforts were made by the authorities to capture Jesse, and in one of the raids on the Underwood Fort, Squire Holbrook shot and seriously wounded the young man, thus starting the feud between the two families. At length, Jess, to avoid so much fighting, went to Iowa, and there was peace for a time. Unquote. Third account. According to the September 26, 1879, the Hickman Courier, quote, Not long after the war, Jess Underwood became involved in a squabble in a bar in Bath County while a circus was going on, which terminated in his killing of young Trumbo. He has always said that he shot at another man and that he had not the slightest intention of shooting Trumbo, to whom he bore no ill will. He escaped and for some time bid defiance to the authorities in Carter County, unquote. With all of these stories, Jesse Underwood leaves the area for some time because of his death. Everything in Carter County seems to go quiet for several years. It would take several years before Jess Underwood would be brought to justice for the death of Trumbo. We read all about this in the March 25, 1879, The Hickman Courier. Quote, it is stated that Jesse Underwood, who has last fall been brought from Lexington Jail to Bath County Jail to be tried for the killing of Trumbo several years ago in Bath, and has escaped, is at present living with his father. He is always armed and with two seven shooters and an eight-shot Spencer rifle, unquote. We do not know for sure the reasons behind the shooting. However, rightly or wrongly, Underwood states that Trumbo was not his target and therefore is not responsible for his death. However, other witnesses claim to the otherwise. We will leave it up to you to be the juror and to weigh your opinions as to what happened on that fateful day in the bar. John Martin The events surrounding John Martin's life after 1877 are both indirectly and directly linked to the Holbrook-Underwood feud. 
and his story would lead to the attack on Fort Underwood and the Rowan County War, which we will get into the details of in another video. According to the July 14, 1885, semi-weekly South Kentuckian newspaper, quote, Martin is the son of a reputable farmer, and he was at one time clerk of Rowan County Court and the proprietor of a large store at Moorhead, the county seat. Early in 1877, Martin fell into bad company, and in a few short months, dissipation and cards compelled him to give up his store. Soon after his failure in business, he was accused of falsifying and mutilating the records of the county court in the interest of a rising politician who was known to be his friend, and the fact of being pretty well established, he was defeated for the office of the next election. This sets the stage as to why John Martin is hated by the Holbrooks and Stampers, and why he was accused of the final horse theft that would lead to war. Horse Theft Claim There are several newspaper accounts of what is going to happen next. We will give each of these accounts that are given and how this leads to the attack on the Underwood Fort. These events will play out further with the rendition of the eyewitness account that Clabe Jones gives us in our Clabe Jones in the Holbrook Underwood War video that is coming up tomorrow. Account 1 According to the July 14, 1885, semi-weekly South Kentuckian newspaper, quote, In the spring of 1876, Martin was arrested in Mason County for horse stealing and, being released on bail, went back to Rowan. Oh, George Underwood, the father of the Underwood boys, lived at Olive Hill, which is just across the line in Carter County. He rented Martin a piece of land, and the latter began to make a crop living meanwhile at the Underwoods' house, and he had brought his young wife. One night some horses were stolen in the neighborhood, and Squire Elijah Holbrook, who was Underwood's nearest neighbor, accused John Martin and Jess Underwood of stealing them. He consulted with his friends, and after several meetings, a notice was sent to Old Man Underwood that Martin must go. Martin's wife was sick, and Underwood told him he could stay until she got better. This defiance of the orders of Judge Lynch incensed the Holbrooks, and war was declared, unquote. Account 2 According to the September 26, 1879, the Hickman Courier, quote, In the winter of 1877, John R. Tabor and John Martin were arrested by Marshal Heflin between Maysville and Cincinnati, charged with horse stealing, unquote. John R. Tabor and John Martin. In this section, it is not just Underwood that is accused with John Martin for horse stealing, but another man named John R. Tabor. We get a glimpse of his life through this story written by the Hickman Courier and how he became involved in the feud that will unfold. According to the September 26, 1879, the Hickman Courier, quote, Tabor had inherited some property from his father and at one time had been prosperous merchant in Hillsboro. But a passion for gambling soon caused the disappearance of his means, and it charged that several occasions that he had stepped beyond the line of the law. In 1870, he settled in Moorhead, and in 1874 became famous by being charged with having mutilated the records which he was custodian as clerk of the circuit court. He was defeated in 1874, became involved in a difficulty with James Carvey, which compelled him to leave Moorhead, and it was while he was wandering around that the alleged crime of horse stealing was committed. At this time, John Martin was under indictment for killing a man named Blair, the brother of Martin's brother's wife, for which he was afterward acquitted. Tabor and Martin were admitted to bail and pondering their trial, went to Carter County, rented a few acres of ground from one of the Underwoods, and commenced hard work to raise a crop. Some horses were missing that belonged to a man named Stamper, living some miles from the Underwoods, and Tabor and Martin were charged with taking them. The Stamper party notified Tabor and Martin to leave, and warned the Underwoods not to harbor them. 
Tabor left at once, and it is stated that he is now in the West. The wife of Martin was sick, so he could not leave. His family was the guest of one of the Underwoods, who was a second time notified to send John Martin away, the Stampers promising to provide for his wife until she could be removed. His host had now become alarmed and told John Martin that he could no longer entertain him. George Lewis Underwood invited Martin to come to his house, which Martin did. Not long afterwards, the same notice was served upon him, and he disregarded it, unquote. The stage is now set. War has been declared. And the battle over the refusal of John Martin to leave Carter County will soon begin with a 19-day siege and attack of Fort Underwood. Join us tomorrow as Clay Jones gives us an eyewitness account of those fateful 19 days and how he became involved in one of the biggest feuds to be in the state of Kentucky. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Feuds. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification button. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries of Appalachian history.